Hello besties, welcome to another music drama episode. This is a type of video that I make on this channel where I discuss tea pertaining to music that I like, don't like, or certain artists that have fallen into certain scandals as to whether or not we should support them, not support them, but yet again, it's also kind of 50-50. Either way, if I find it as tea worthy, I'm going to spill about it. Peep the hat. Anyway, before we start, I'm serving, today I'm serving a barbecue dad palette. I don't have the long socks. I have my sticker socks <laughs> from 127 um, because I miss Taehong so much. It's not even funny anymore. But anyway, um, yeah, we're serving barbecue dad palette. Maybe I will stand this whole episode. I don't know. But like either way, I just I just wanted to show you guys that I can be a dad. So yeah, <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Yikes. Um... Okay, just wanted to make this clear that before I start anything with criticizing this album, I'm not criticizing Taylor completely. I don't hate her. I don't think there's anything wrong with what she did because it is her career to make music. However, I just do not like the second half of this album. I will go into further discussion as to why, as I promised within my community post. Um, but yeah, there is just a lot of things that I feel like I need to break down for you guys to understand why I don't like this album and why I think people should talk about it more. Because it seems to me that ever since this album came out, not a lot of people have been saying that they don't like it. And I feel like that's sort of being covered up by the Swifties, or maybe it's just an algorithm thing that I've been noticing on social media. But either way, I just want to bring this forth to the table because I think we should have more discussions about critiquing certain artists, certain work, certain albums. And one of them is Taylor Swift. Simple as that, right? I, I mean, I think that's a simple explanation. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get started by addressing just an announcement specifically with this channel before we start and then we will get to the tea about torture post department so um the first point i want to make is yes there is some stuff going on with this channel meaning that i will be taking a break after this video is uploaded so that means that i won't be uploading for a while i'll still be active on social media i'll still be active on my second channel which is my zelda channel if you'd like to subscribe um, and just some other marketing projects I will be active on, such as the Gonzo Film Reviews podcast and some other marketing stuff that I'm doing on the side. But the reason why I'm taking a break off of this channel is because I'm focusing on this giant music project that I'm making. I won't reveal anything, but it's going to be big and I want to finish it when the summer hits. So stay tuned for that. You can follow me on social media for more updates. That's usually where I post about my music. Um, and stuff like that. So I just wanted to give you an FYI, a heads up for all of you before I continue further into this video. So as I do usually with these music drama episodes, I am so raw with this stuff. Like I yap and yap and yap. So prepare yourself for that. Not a lot of special editing is going to go into the video as I've done with the prior music drama episodes. But yeah, let's get into it. So, all right personal history with Taylor Swift. I have been a Swifty since I was probably nine or 10, maybe 11 or 12. I don't know. It's been so long since I've really connected with Taylor Swift. Um, and I'll explain further why, but I've listened to her for a very long time and I was a hardcore Swifty. Okay. I had Taylor Swift stuff all over my room, specifically on one side of my closet it was completely plastered with Taylor. I had all of her albums at the time. I had most of her magazines. I had a lot of posters of her. Like I was obsessed with her and I had a perfectly good reason for it because at the time, this is when her music, in my personal opinion, was at its peak. Um, she released Red during this time and then she did 1989, Reputation, which love that album with all my heart and soul. Um, 
and I just really grew fond of her because she was the first artist that got me into doing music. For example, playing guitar, signing up for guitar classes, learning music, producing music, etc. She was the catalyst for all of that. And so I will forever be grateful for her for inspiring me to get into music. Um, I literally thought I was going to be the next Taylor Swift. I mean, every girl dreams of that, right? Like every girl dreams of being in the music industry and being so successful like Taylor Swift. And if I'm not mistaken, last year she was noted as the top female artist of all time. And she has won so many Grammys, so many awards. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. But yeah, she continually inspired me. Um, And then as I was listening to Red when it came out, um, I listened to her older stuff and I just fell in love with her. I thoroughly enjoyed her music and her writing. And I felt like she was the only artist, in my personal opinion, that really touched upon vulnerable topics of coming of age as a woman. Heartbreak, obviously, because that's like her favorite category she likes to write about. Um, Womanhood in general. Um, getting over certain things of life that are tricky, such as the death of a loved one or um, overcoming a certain obstacle, like getting bullied or like um, getting hurt by the media, um, being vulnerable on social media, being in the moment, um, going through a certain trial. You know what I mean? Like she was a great storyteller for those reasons alone. And I think that's why I was so fixated upon her. So I started writing music because of her, and ever since then, it's just been this constant, like, storytelling of writing that I've been doing within my own version of it. Um, And take that for how you will. You know, everybody has a freedom of thinking of how my music is interpreted, and the same thing goes for Taylor Swift. So after that, um, I listened to Reputation, obviously, when that came out. Oh my god, probably one of my favorite albums she's ever made. I would say Reputation and Red are my favorite albums. Um, and Reputation really, really catapulted me into making my first ever album in high school. Um, I got tickets to go see her during the Reputation tour, which, oh my god, I got floor seats, everything. I saw her so close. She flew above my head, everything. Like, what the fuck? Like, it was insane. I loved seeing her live, and especially during an era like Reputation, because it was just so captivating and so different with sound and uh, presentation and her exposing the media and stuff like that. Like, it just really made me realize how powerful music is and how much you can present yourself to make your music seem like it's telling a story. And I think that's why I think, that's why I personally believe she is one of the biggest artists of having an era of sorts. Like, she was the artist that made me go like, Well, I remember when this artist did this certain era, or this certain era, this certain era, and I think she actually kind of normalized that word. Let's be so for real. But side note aside, (laughs) I listened to Reputation, and then I was obsessed with her for a long time, and then Lover came out, right? And you would think to yourself that me, as an avid Swifty at the time, I thought I would thoroughly enjoy it. And I liked the first couple singles, like You Need to Calm Down, Me, and um, Lover. But when Lover came out, I started to drift. I don't know what it really was. I think it was just too lighthearted for me. Um, But yet again, her older stuff had a similar theme, you know. But I think Lover was the album where I kind of was like, I have to move on, you know. Like, (laughs) I was sort of growing out of it. And I think a lot of people go through phases. And even if you say that, like, oh, I'll be with this artist for life and stuff like that, it's like, you're going to go through phases no matter what. Like, that's how I felt about One Direction. That's how I felt about Taylor Swift. And same thing with other artists that I really like. And nowadays, I go in and out of phases. I go back in, then I go back out. It's just it's just kind of weird. But anyway, I, I drifted away from Lover because I just didn't really like it. I thought it was too lighthearted for me. It sort of was like a delusional light, almost, and I I just didn't really, I just couldn't understand where she was coming from, and I feel like that's totally fine. So I sort of lost touch, so I grew out of it, and then I started listening to, like, more Lana Del Rey and um, rap music and stuff like that, and then obviously I got back into K-pop and um, other artists I can't really think of at the top of my head, but you get the picture, right? So, Lover. And then 
Folklore and Evermore came out. Now, when Folklore came out, I didn't listen to it because I sort of lost touch with Taylor completely. Because at this time, this is when the pandemic happened. So I was lost in reality, period. I think we all were during the pandemic. But um, Folklore, to me, like when I heard it and I heard people talk about it, I was like, is this even Taylor Swift? Because you grew up listening to an artist where it was like this constant rhythm of like different eras and different like exploding powerful sound that was vulnerable and like you know it addressed a lot of like heartbreak issues whereas folklore was like soft and elegant and it told a story of another person and it was like I've never seen this in Taylor Swift before so therefore I was like is this even Taylor? Like, I thought it was a whole other person. Let's be for real. And the same thing with Evermore. I honestly think that Evermore is Folklore's sister. Um, and a lot of fans say that anyway, because of the sound and the presentation, etc. But um, I did listen to them eventually in 2021, and I did like them. But if I had to choose between reputation and folklore, I'm going to choose reputation, bitch. Absolutely. Same thing if Red and Evermore were against each other. I'm picking Red. Of course I'm picking Red. That is an obvious question. But yeah, I just for, I just didn't think it was Taylor, but I still liked him. The thing is, is that I just had this sneaking suspicion, even when I listened to Folklore and Evermore, that I wasn't going to like her next few works. I just had this gut feeling that like the writing is starting to go just a tad downhill um, because I feel like there wasn't really a lot of, like, say with Taylor writing a lot, and this was also during the time when, um, Scooter Braun and Scott Borchetta, like, stole her work, so it was kind of a, a weird time period when all of this happened, um, but for me as a fan and a listener, I sort of was like, I have a feeling this isn't gonna happen good, so yeah, um, but I will say, Folklore and Evermore are perfect for the fall, so highly recommend listening to those albums in the fall if you haven't done so. Anyway, after that, this is when the whole Scooter Braun and Scott Borchetta incident happened where they stole Taylor Swift's writing. Now, I can't even imagine feeling like someone that you trusted for years and years has stolen your work. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Big Eyes, but it's such a great film. It reminded me so much of that because it was about an artist who her husband uh, claimed that it was his own paintings when in actuality it was his wife, Margaret Keene. And it is based on a true story, so if you ever want to look that up, please do. But when this whole thing came out, I immediately thought of that. And I sort of was like, I don't know how to feel, you know? Because a part of me is like, her older stuff is so good, and it has such a time capsule that I cannot escape from when I do listen to Taylor, but I also understand, in a sense, why she re-released it, but also I understand why people are saying, like, well, she's doing it for money. Like, it's this weird, like, back-and-forth debate that I had in my head, so when her re-release stuff came out, I was sort of like, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I was sort of like, okay, mm, can we, like, move on? <laughs> but, yeah, I know that's already going to spark some controversy just from me saying that, but that's just how I truly feel. So when I do listen to her older stuff, I listen to the stolen version because I, it just reminds me so much of where I was and the nostalgia behind it and the time capsule part of it. There are certain songs that she re that she released that could never be replicated in her newer re-release stuff because I feel like her voice was different back then. Or there was different types of sounds that she made that I'm like, I cannot get rid of. You know what I mean? Like, they were the reasons why I thoroughly enjoyed them. Now, I will say her bonus track stuff, for example, her Taylor's version of Red... I really like. I think the Taylor's version of Red is actually pretty good, and I do listen to it from time to time, but I would listen to the stolen version more often. Same thing with her older works. Um, so that's basically that. So then after that, it was Midnight's. 
Midnight's. You all have already seen my album reaction, or at least most of you, I'm assuming. And a lot of you have seen what I've said and what I've heard. And all I'm going to say is that Midnight's is a great album for the most part. I'm going to give it like a 75% good, maybe 80 if I want to be nice, because I think the album is so pretty with the sounds itself. But the thing that Taylor Swift used to be good at, and I'm saying used to very explicitly, is she can tell the story, you know? Whereas with Midnight's, it was very like, it was like a clusterfuck of things. Like, it was very like, okay, so now I'm here. Okay, wait, now I'm suddenly here. Now I'm suddenly here. And it's like, I don't know where you're coming from. And I know that you're trying to experiment, but it's not working for me. Also, this is where I started to realize that she does a lot of repetitive um, sound, with pitch and lyricism specifically (laughs) you guys already see this coming she's the queen of c major okay like she has written so many songs in c major and i've noticed that so much in midnights it was a constant like this song's in c major this song is in c major and this song is in c major and it sounds exactly the same and the lyricism is exactly the same and it just it just bothers me Like, as someone who has been producing for over seven years now and has been making music and tried to make things that are a little bit different, it's sort of irritating to be like, all right, so you go from Bejeweled to Labyrinth. Like, I don't know what you're trying to convey. You know what I mean? So that's why I I was sort of like, okay, this isn't, this isn't going to work, you know, like, it's gro- it's good. It's very good, but it's not great. So now when I listen to her stuff, that's the feeling that I have every time I listen to a new work from her because it's like it's sort of like that phrase when someone says I like it but I don't love it. It's kind of like that. It has a good sound, it provides a good comfort, a temporary comfort I would say, but it just it's just not the same as it once was. And that's what makes me irritated about Taylor Swift's music now. So this just brings on to my point about the Tortured Poets Department. So after her other re-release stuff after Midnight's, we then go to Tortured Poets. Now I also did an album reaction of the first half because I originally was going to do an album synopsis on the second half, which is considered the anthology or the surprise album that Taylor made when she released the Tortured Poets Department. But I also said that if I did not like the second half, I was going to critique it. Here I am. (laughs) Here I am. So first half, I did an album reaction video of this. I liked it, but I didn't love it. That's why I gave it a 7.5 and and an 8 out of 10, if I am not mistaken. The reason for this was, as I've stated with Midnight's, same exact key, same exact concepts, and all of that stuff. It also had the same thematics and similar, uh, like, production, I would say. And I think that is because of Jack Antonoff, but we will get to him later. But for the most part, the first half is good, especially Fortnite. I mean, I know that one is popular, but I love Fortnite a lot. I think it is such a pretty song, and it's a good, like, it's a good synth song, and I'm a sucker for synths. Um, so I couldn't help but like smile at it and I just thought it was such a good song. First half did not really end on a good note so I'm kind of like let's just see what the second half brings right? So then I decided to listen to all of it. Now take this with a grain of salt when you listen to the Torture Poets Department because it is so desperately sad. Um, You might need to give yourself a break if you've been through a lot of triggering mental health issues recently. I will admit it is very depressing and you have to listen to it, I would say one day at a time with a couple tracks because it's just, it's just truly sad. But at the same time, if you really mask off that emotion, there's not a lot of realism to this album. So that's the first reason why I don't like the album or the second half of the album, I should say. But the second reason is because of the sound itself. Now, as I promised y'all, we would get back to Jack Antonoff's production behind the Torture Poets department, so now he comes into the light now. 
his production behind the Torture Poets department is shit. I love Jack Antonoff. I think he is such an incredible producer. He has written so many beautiful works, especially with Lana Del Rey. I think most of the sounds that she has provided with Jack Antonoff meshes perfectly. But when it comes to Taylor Swift, that's a whole other story. Um, there was a lot of works that she did with him that were very good, if I'm not mistaken. Red was one of them, and I did like that one. It was great. But as we get further into her career, he was responsible for most of the work. And now I'm not saying that he was solely responsible for the sound. Most of it was Taylor Say and some of the sound engineers. However, he had a he had a say in some of it, and it was just not good. I personally feel like he copy-pasted some art, other artist sounds and they were just like okay taylor see what you can do like i feel like he was kind of lazy because either one he had a lot more other works going on such as bleachers or maybe some stuff with lana because i heard rumors that they were doing to, uh, music together so i don't know really but i regardless i feel like it was lazy and he could have done so much better if him and taylor would have had more time to make the Tortured Poets department, I would have given them a better chance for me to like it. But it was also the same thematics, the same lyricism, the entire fucking time. And let's not forget, the Queen of C Major comes back into the second half, especially during the second half. Hate me all you want, say all you want, but it's not good music. It's just so desperate and lazy and there's this victimized presentation of when the lyrics tried to invoke something but it, it didn't invoke anything for example during um the last song the manuscript there's a part where she says he said that if the sex was half as good as the conversation was soon they'd be pushing strollers but soon it was over taylor i get it I get that you want to be in this man's pants. Like, I get it, girly. But maybe you're just not the one. Maybe if you would have had more time to make something called the manuscript, maybe have a sound that sounds sort of like that. Because whenever I look at these titles in the album, right, you think to yourself, okay, this is going to be very powerful. It's going to have very invoking tracks and like invoking sound and lyrics but it just it just sounds like she's talking to herself you know what I mean like there's a difference between writing music and writing poetry if this was a poetry album oh my god I would have eaten it up it would have had such a better light it would have had way more realism versus just I'm so sad he broke my heart oh we didn't have sex but the conversation was good it's just It's so goddamn frustrating. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. As I said at the beginning, I'm trying so hard to grasp at straws with Taylor. I really am because I know from her prior works, she does such an amazing job of writing music and she's an excellent musician. She's had it all. But I can't help but say that it's gone downhill. I feel like if she would have had more time and more production, maybe more than one person on the album, yeah, maybe maybe the album could have been better. Like, I feel like a lot of the time when artists that I love release music, the ones that I love the most take their time, they sit down, they let everything soak in, and they just produce and produce and produce and produce, and they keep it very quiet and then they release it. Now, I know that a lot of you bitches are going to come for me and say stuff like, well, Lana does that, like Taylor. And it's like, that's true. She releases her albums every two, two to three years, mostly. However, she is a prime example of making a poem and putting it into a song. She doesn't rant. She doesn't talk when she sings. It sounds like a song. And from her poetry album itself, 
it does sound similar towards her music, but that's just due to her songwriting alone. And she has said from the start of her career that she wanted to be a writer first before she became a musician. So don't even try that card <laughs> with me. She has written such better music, such better lyricism, and way more raw and vulnerable details about being a woman. Because it wasn't just about heartbreak, wasn't just about loss of losing someone, it was simply going through life amidst tons of pain and a variety of conflict. Taylor, on the other hand, did that before with her older works, but now it's solely heartbreak. And I honestly feel like she's doing it on purpose. I know it's probably not the case, but it is solely heartbreak. And that sort of bothers me because I don't want her to become like Olivia Rodrigo. You know what I mean? It is, she's trying so hard to be different and trying so hard to like put an application towards heartbreak. But I feel like if she would have been more authentically herself, it could have had more value. But if that's truly how she feels about herself and she knows that she's done everything she could, then her music sucks. That's the moral of the story. The second to last point I will make about this is the fans overhyped this album, as they have been with most of her other works. Now, I have been in the Swifty crowd for years, years, okay? And in person, the Swifties are mostly nice. Most of them are very nice. Um, when I went to see Taylor during her reputation tour, the fans were super nice. They were very, um, they were very excited. They were very nice to other people. Uh, they respected people's spaces. Like even being in the floor crowd, which you would think would be the most rowdy crowd, the fans next to me were super nice. Like I met a lot of cool fans. I found some fans that did like their own projects. They've met Taylor themselves. Like it was super cool to see that. But because everything is mostly online now with Taylor Swift specifically, especially after the NFL, they're insane. I think that's why I have such trouble with um, with signing with Swifties because they're super fans. They go really crazy, they're delusional, and they just have a lot of stuff where it's like they'll do anything to protect someone. Like it's almost like a cult. And there's some sides of it where it's like, I understand why you are a fan. And I know that coming from a K-pop fan, I know that what I'm saying out of my mouth is so hypocritical because I can kind of be the same way. But I know for a fact that when it's enough, it's enough. And I set boundaries for myself and I'm like, no. Because as I've said before, I can be as delusional as I want jokingly, but I know in reality that if I was delusional, arrest me. <laughs> put me in handcuffs and take me to jail. Like I set so much boundaries or I set so many boundaries for myself when it comes to celebrity uh, worshiping, I guess you could say that like, I don't, I don't idolize them that much. Like I just kind of see them as an inspiration and I fangirl about it. I scream about it. I have a great time and I see them in concert and everything, but I don't defend them with every single ounce of my being. And I actually touch grass matter of factly, okay? Like I do plenty of other activities and not make it my entire personality. So in conclusion, Taylor should have done better. If she would have had more time writing the album, constructing it, having more people uh, making this album, like more sound engineers, producers, writers, it could have had more value to it and I feel like it would have gained a lot more perspective on the listeners that don't really like Taylor Swift, but they want to give her a chance. So she should have had more time, more years to write this stuff, because I feel like if you're going to write something as powerful as something called the Tortured Poets Department, you got to make it sound like you are being completely tortured and you're being completely abused. And for some of it, I would say about like 40 percent. Sure, it sounded like that. But the other part of it sounded like she was playing a victim card, making it sound like that she's the victim and that she is the central point of being heartbroken. And it's like, it's more than that. 
you know? So if you want to centralize your message of saying that I was a tortured poet, Taylor didn't bring that to the table. And that's why I will agree with people that she's not a poet. She is a songwriter. And that is all she can do with writing. And if she wants to increase that skill of being a poet and being a better writer, then she should reteach herself by getting more people onto her team and learning more, experiencing life more. And I think that now she is in that midst of it because she's now like experimenting with more life and now she's with Travis Kelsey, which I don't support, I gotta be honest. Um, maybe she'll have something good, but I know for a fact that after this, I'm not gonna have as much hope anymore and it's not, it's probably not gonna be good. I hope you all understand where I'm coming from and I hope that you all don't take this at a snowflake perspective and see it for what it's worth. I know that some of you have probably been hurt by what I've said about Taylor Swift, but I just don't like her music as much as I used to. Um, her new music is not good. Her older stuff, really good. I just simply have to say that I don't like it. That's all there is to it. I just want you all to understand where I'm coming from and hopefully we will have a civil discussion in the comments about it. But yeah, I will be on my way. After this, I won't be uploading videos as much as I used to, but just feel free to follow me on my social medias, check out my cool marketing and music projects that I've been doing, and I will hear from you soon. Have a good one.